Okay, so just to recap a bit, I uh, checked the alignment of the uh, radio and uh, determined that the alignment was pretty good. I didn't want to fiddle with it unnecessarily since I know the radio is receiving fairly well too. So I left the alignment alone. The real challenge with this radio is, and a lot of radios, is getting the pointer into the right spot. I replaced the string on it and in doing that, of course, I removed the pointer. So what I've done is I've reinserted the radio back into the record player here. So here it is behind the board. You can see all the tubes and stuff. And we're going to look at the dial, which is up here on the very top. And I'll just show you that. Okay, a bit of a funny camera angle. My camera is aimed straight down onto the top of the uh, record player and the radio. And the pointer is over here. And I'll move it a bit so you can kind of see it there. It's way over there. So. I have the capacitor um, set at one extreme, and I put the pointer on at the end of the dial here. Should be close, but the first thing we got to find out is how close. But I'm going to read. <laughs> I'm going to read to you a couple of uh, lines out of the alignment instruction sheet here. It's quite interesting, and uh, I'm not sure I've ever seen this on an alignment sheet before. But uh, here's one: caution, close tuning completely before removing chassis from cabinet. Now why would you want to do that? And I think it, the problem is there's a clearance issue in getting the radio out of the cabinet and if you have the capacitor uh, open then I'm pretty sure there's a chance that those plates are going to be uh, bent or knocked about as you pull the radio out. And that could even be what happened when I extracted the radio earlier. I hadn't availed myself of this information didn't bother doing anything special with the capacitor and if you remember I discovered that the capacitor was in fact um, um, bent then the plates were bent and it wouldn't even turn all the way so I could have done that extracting it from the uh, from the uh, uh, cabinet let's take a look again and uh, turn this guy on and everything should be ready to go very good. And we'll find out if, by some chance, the, uh, the pointer's in the right spot. And what I'm going to have to do here is put the radio in, check the pointer, see how far out it is, pull the radio out, it's a big hassle, move the pointer, put the radio back in, double check it again. Don't want to do that too many times. So here comes the radio. Apparently there's a helicopter flying over my house right now. So, here, so we'll, we'll tune in a known station here. Oh my gosh, the dial turns the wrong way! <laughs> oh. well, I don't have an external antenna, so we might not get any of them. Let's see. Right in this area. Okay, nothing on the internal antenna, so I'll hook up the external antenna. We'll go back. There's the pointer there. So I think we're listening to uh, 640. Just turn it down a little bit. I have another radio going. I'm trying to verify what I'm tuned to here. Right next to the 
next door to us, we're just with the project right on the water here. Yep. Um, also in Mississauga, the Absolute Towers, where we're done by uh, City Zen, uh, the Maryland Monroe Towers. Towers. And all the twisty yeah, those are very cool. So, um, household okay, names, so, uh, in fact, this is 640, 20, 30, 40 years and the pointer, which is so hard to see uh, on the camera, another major developer in, in, is in up too high. Why? So I've been around forever. So, just, turn, I, 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 just turn that down so I'm not competing with it. So it's off by about, let's measure it here. <laughs> it's tricky. You know what, I'm gonna do it with a caliper. That's a smart move. So we'll pick up the measurement with the caliper here. where it is to where it should be. So it's around 690 and it should be at 640. So I'd say that's about how much we need to move it right there. Okay, I'm not going to take the radio out. Yahoo. Okay. Switch off. I guess what I gotta think about is do I wanna take it out, move the pointer, and fix it onto the string at that point on the assumption that that's gonna be fine. And you know what? I think I probably will do that. So I just have a couple screws holding the radio in. Just read about the capacitor should be closed when I take it out. Yeah, there is a moment where the capacitor could bang onto this. That's probably what happened to it past in its in its past life. So no. I gotta do I gotta do I got a big problem here. I gotta, I gotta hold this in my hand and try to do this. Hmm. Okay, so how am I gonna do that? How the heck am I gonna do that? Okay, so making the measurement. Go. Oh, <laughs> that's it. Now I gotta fix this string somehow. I think I think I can just squeeze this tab a little bit here. Try my best not to drop the radio. Okay, that's that's locked on there enough. I don't need to go any further. Put it back in. Good. There we go. Battle. This fight is not exactly a Tyson versus a Holyfield. As a matter of fact, this isn't even Laverne versus Sherwood. That would actually be, I think, a more brutal bout than Orlando Bloom and Justin Bieber. Jeff MacArthur, weekday afternoons, 1 to 4. It's time to talk about it on Talk Radio, AM 640. 640. In our savvy franchised global village, we seem to have lost touch with the only a local business owner can bring. The yeah, pointer's just about to get on 640. The restaurant right tour there. shops every day Good. for the freshest ingredients. Since 1985, 
610, 640, that's 1010 right in there badly interfered with though. Too. So, I think that's pretty good. I'm just have to turn our attention back to the record player and uh, see what. Uh, and uh, my objective with the record player is simply to make the mechanism operate. I'm not trying to actually successfully play a record with this with this guy. So let me uh, set it up here, and we'll check out the record player. Okay, so I have the uh, uh, radio screwed back in properly uh, from underneath and we're ready to see what happens with this uh, record player now. I'm a little bit curious about it myself. Mm, you can't quite see in there, can you? So, uh, let me fix my... Okay, there we go. That's a little bit of a better angle. And uh, the player is mid mid operation here. Let's see if we can get get it back to where it needs to go. There it goes. A bunch of wires hanging down underneath it. Oh, it's coming back to play again. Okay, not sure what's going to happen with this guy when I turn him on, but let's, let's give it a go. I'm going to stick a record on here just to... It's not a 78 record. This is a 78 player. It only goes at that speed. Oop. There we are. Okay don't really know what's going to happen here. So first, the whole thing is switched off. So apply power. And of course nothing has happened. And we'll switch to radio first. Oh! <laughs> it smokes! <laughs> ah. Man, there's more than one way to... <laughs> I did that. Lucky him I didn't have my fingers here. Holy smokes, I would have been singing the blues. Oh, I know, I gotta plug it in first. Okay. Let's plug it in here. Okay, I'll switch it on. Now there's another interesting note in here right down here. Oh my gosh! Wow! Okay, there's a new super danger here with this thing. It's trying to bite me for crying out loud. What's going on there? Wow, okay. I don't know why that keeps uh, deciding to do what it's doing. That's a little bit scary. <laughs> uh, hmm. I gotta lock this thing back here somehow. Or I'm gonna get my fingers broken. Let's see what we can do. Maybe a little bit of overkill here, but. Simultaneously locking it and pulling it closed. That's crazy. That's a crazy thing to do, but 
They're not coming down now. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Let's turn it up. Here's the radio. Let's switch to radio high. Phono. Oh, turn the volume down. Maybe a big hummer here. Let's see. Phono. Oh my gosh, that thing came on. <laughs> okay, well, it thinks it's playing a record right now. There's no audio, of course. The cartridge is a dud. Let's take this over here. Come on, come on, you can do it. Oh, that's too bad. If we have it go around a few times, it may loosen up. But it probably really needs a relube. It's not moving in fine up here. There we go. Oh, come on. Yeah, so I'll have to do a little bit of lubrication under there to get that mechanism going. There's no on off switches or anything in here. This way. And it puts the radio back on. Yeah, we'll have to do a little bit of lubrication on this guy. So shut him off. And release this <laughs> oh, yeah. somewhat crazy safety lock there. Boy, I was pretty lucky I didn't get that thing whacking onto my fingertip or something like that because would not have been pleasant that's for sure okay. so let's take a look at the mechanism here do here is uh, this looks looks like this should be well lubricated and it does not look to be very very strange sort of mechanism here let's take a closer look at it Check my focus here and see where we are. Okay, we're focused way out here. So, now here the motor itself. Okay, so I can turn that by hand very freely. And the bearing here is riveted in place. So it's not going anywhere. And we have a, quite the mechanism down here. Switch back to my other camera since my close up camera is not much closer anyway. So I think you know the easiest thing to do is just hit this with a lot of lubrication because it does look like dried up stuff all over the place. So let's see what we can do here. There's a bit of a drum roll there. Just going to use some alcohol. I loosen up things in here.
clean off a lot of this older grease and gook. It's all pretty superficial what I'm doing here. It's probably not going to affect the mechanism terribly. The stuff I'm cleaning off. But some of that alcohol will have penetrated into the parts that really need to be lubricated and will have loosened it up a bit. Mm. Very, very, so I'm, I'm doing what the motor is supposed to do now. I can tell you this is a, just about impossible mechanism to move. figure out just where any kind of friction might be. I think it's just about everywhere here. So next thing I'm going to do is spray in uh, I'm just going to use some WD-40 here. hard to turn this thing. I'm trying to figure out exactly what it is that's causing the hard to moveness on this. out of here. Keeping a hold of the lid now so I won't get it slammed on my fingers. Okay, let's see if we can take this out of here. No, we cannot. I'm going to shoot some lubricant right down through there. I'm going to use regular oil here. I'm trying my best not to get it on this. Loosen it up. Voila. So that may have been the problem right there. Ooh, still pretty tough. Right in here, pretty tough. Right in this area here. Sometimes these mechanisms are, are tough. They just there are spots in them where the uh, force is uh, you know there's bound to be a maximum point in the mechanism. It needs to get past that point.
kind of surprising. How it, it kind of moves these wires a little bit. Get them out of the way. Oh, that's really tough. Let's see what it can do on its own now. way through the, the movement there. But, uh, we'll just start it where it is. Okay. Now, let's plug it in. Once again, I'm using an isolation transformer here now, so I'm not so worried about, about things. Okay, power on. Power's on, the light has come on over here. Let it warm up so we can hear the radio. You know for sure it's working. There we are. I'll switch the phono and this thing's going to jump into action right away. Here. Come on, keep going. Keep going. rumble in this record player. <laughs> okay, nice and free. Nah, it's not got the oomph. -a. No oomph. Something else is restricting it, its motion. It's getting a little bit looser each time, but... Not much. Something I didn't do. Let's, let's check it out. Power off. Back up you go. really muscling this thing to make it move here. It's pushing this mechanism, which is pretty stiff. That's a hard job right there. Yeah, it could just be the motor's just not strong enough. I'll do the trick. I am giving it full, uh, full power, too. Well, main thing is I got the radio going, got the string back on it, got the pointer lined up. Not really the intention to get this record player playing records. It would be nice though if the mechanism kind of did its thing, because it's kind of cool to see. But uh, for now, that's as far as we want to go with this guy. So, hey, yeah, I think that's it for him. This guy's been a, he's been a blessing and a nightmare at the same time. So, but I got a couple more record players to work on. Hmm. Why don't we check those out? See you on the next video.